introduction, Governor Sarah Palin. Palin. Georgia. I spoke yesterday a little bit mentioning that how much I love Georgia. I mean, since I was a teenager, so much so that in high school, I actually applied for the University of Georgia because I was obsessed with Herschel Walker and what he was accomplishing. I knew I wouldn't end up at the uh, University of Georgia, but I did it just so that I could carry around the application and say, yeah, I'm going to go to Georgia. Um, and then, what? lo and behold, next thing I know, my teenage son ends up at Fort Benning. He enlists in the Army, and this was, um, this was his start. So thank you, Georgia, for um, what it is that you provided my son, my family. Um, I'm extremely proud of him and every vet. Do you love your freedom, Georgia? If you love your freedom, then you thank a vet. And any vet who is here, raise your hand. We're going to honor you. We're going to thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank God we have the freedom to thank our vets, to assemble today and every day. We better hold on to that. The only way that we hold on to that, to save our rights, to save America, is to save the Senate. And that's why we're here, to make sure that Georgia shows up, votes for Kelly and David, not just votes. We don't need to just win it. We need to crush it. We need to send the loudest message that we can. And it is in Georgia's hands whether we do so or not. What is at stake? I know that you all know because you're in the arena. You care enough on a morning like this even to show up to be bold enough, you all wear in your even your Make America Great hats and all your garb. I love seeing people with that boldness. It's kind of strange that we even have to thank each other for being so bold. No, I mean, that should be commonplace. That should be something that we are all so proud of. Um, but I do appreciate so much your activism. By the way, I do love uh, all the garb. I, I love that. Republicans working like crazy to support the lazy. Sometimes it's um, sometimes it's dangerous for me to call out somebody who's wearing a T-shirt because I think from a distance, oh, that's cool, you know. And I ask him, and then I'm like, ooh, I should not have asked that because. Of but um, your T-shirt, the appeal to heaven, uh, George Washington's first flag that he commissioned, the Continental Army. You recognize that? That's what we have to do too, folks. Appeal to heaven. We have to make sure that we are asking God to bless this race on January 5th, how important this is, that his will be done. Too, that I have that right, that I get to talk about God in public. Heaven forbid that's ever taken away. Stay in the arena. Stay fighting, Georgia. Um, the world is looking at Georgia right now. Not just the eyes of America on Georgia, but the world. Because people know... What happens in America, what happens to America, affects the entire globe because we are that nation that our founders envisioned. We are that nation that is that beacon of hope. That what if we aren't America? W where would people go for any, any um, ideals, any ideology to emulate? There is nowhere to go but America if you want your inalienable rights, if you want those freedoms that come from God. They don't come from a bunch of politicians. They come from God. So if America changes, if America is fundamentally transformed, there is nowhere for people to go for that hope and that remembrance of what our founders and our charters of liberty laid out for us. There is so much hope in America. There's hope with candidates like Kelly and David. They recognized that our president needed that support when it came to the Supreme Court nomination. And it was Kelly, as a matter of fact, who was the first senator who publicly called for confirmation before the election, the rigged election, 
thankfully, Kelly called for that. Senate following suit, knowing that, um, yeah, they better get it done then. Thankfully, um, Judge Barrett now, who is sitting on the Supreme Court, thankfully we can have faith that ultimately she and the other conservatives on the court are going to do the right thing. It's not even a matter of, it's not even a matter really of their uh, political bent. It's a matter of them just following the Constitution. It's as simple as that. So thankfully, President Trump, with his legacy now in the judiciary, in the judicial system, is something that we need to be so thankful for and not just take it for granted. But that, too, another reason why we need to save the United States Senate. It saves Georgia, but it saves America. Can you imagine who it is that the other side wants to put on that court? And then, of course, how that selection affects not just our children, but their children and their children and their children. These Supreme Court nominees, how absolutely impacting everything it is that they do affecting our nation. So Georgia, when America is looking at you all and expecting the best on January 5th, we're looking at it as much more than a, a state race, much more than that. We're looking at, really, which way is America going to go? January 5th is a crossroads for America. I hope that your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers understand that. I trust that you all understand that. Again, that's why you're in the arena. That's why you're willing to put so much on the line for that vote and this country. But it can't be just you. Obviously, what the other side wants is for um, you all, people who want to vote the right way, to just take it for granted and assume that, oh, somebody else can carry the water or somebody else can cast that vote. My one vote doesn't matter. We're going to find on January 5th that every single vote matters. So please encourage your friends, your family, your coworkers. We've got to get that word out there how important it is. You're not going to get the word from the media. You're not going to get the word from the lamestream media. Uh, 12 years ago when I ran, and I was getting clobbered, you know, with um, a characterization of me via the media, I remember thinking, all this fake, I think I was before my time, because I used to talk about fake news all the time. Like, they're just making things up. Knowing firsthand what that does uh, to a person's reputation, to their record, you can have a great record in the Media can destroy your record even. Seeing all those years ago what the media was doing and seeing how much worse they are today, it blows my mind what they get away with. We were just talking over here about the frustration that we do have with the media, um, how unfair things are in the media, and um, how they've hijacked you know, the narrative in the nation. They've They've hijacked even terminology, and um, we're talking about, okay, well, we talked so much about the problem, but why aren't people more excited about solutions? You know, we can be preaching to the choir and complaining about um, the unfairness of what's going on in the culture through the media. I mean, they're used to, they used to be the referee, and now the media is so complicit in the, in the corruption. But... We need to start talking more about solutions. The first uh, tangible solution to the problem that we're going to face as the media gets worse and worse and Democrats get more and more radical is that vote on January 5th. It's why you need to send that loud message to the media, that loud message to the rest of the country. The rest of the country is going to look for some hope and on that day, please give us that hope so we can have solutions to the problems that we face. The greatest problem is what Barack Obama promised us when he was back in 08. He said, we're only days away from fundamentally transforming America. You know the definition of that? You only fundamentally transform something for which you have disdain. Think about it. Otherwise, you wouldn't, no need to transform it, certainly not fundamentally. So he came out and he promised what he was going to do. 
and they've been chipping away, chipping away ever since. We don't need a fundamental transformation of America. We need a fundamental restoration of America, all that is good and free, all that was lined out for us in our Charters of Liberty, in our Bill of Rights. Thankfully, Kelly and David, they protect that Bill of Rights. They understand the Constitution. David is a huge advocate of the Second Amendment, and I know that that's so important here in Georgia because you guys get it, and not just for hunting, right? I mean, I'm always having to explain to people, too, yeah, I hunt, but um, that's, that's, yeah, that's not why um, I'm such an ardent supporter also of the Second Amendment. It's because I know why our, our founders and those who um, offered amendments to our Constitution, why they put it in there for when government gets out of control. It's not even just for self-protection against our neighbors who may, no, it's for government if they get out of control and if they come for the people. That's, of course, why they want to take away the guns. But for that Second Amendment, also the right to life. I'm looking at one of the opponents in this race, and as was mentioned, I'm looking at this. He's a pastor? Warnock, I'm like, how, how can you be preaching from the pulpit? Peace, peace, justice. He didn't know that peace begins in the womb and that justice, justice is protecting God's most precious, innocent creation. It's not, yeah, it's not killing that, uh, we playing God and, and killing that and government sanctioning that. So to see an opponent like that to have gotten as far as he's gotten, surely that's not a representation of what most of you in Georgia believe. So you need to send that message, too, to the rest of the country on January 5th. Say, no, 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 that's not what we believe in. We do believe in protecting that sanctity of life, that gift of life that God has given us. If you all want to ensure the blessings that God has bestowed upon all of us for our children and their children. Ensure the blessings of posterity. We, we have got to be loud on January 5th. Not, you have, I'd like to say, oh, you have nothing to lose. You might, no, you have everything to lose if we don't do this on